What's up guys? Welcome back to David's Feed. In this episode, we take a look at a bunch of different Cobras. And believe me, there is more than enough action and some very unexpected moments. Hello everyone, today we're back at Chris's house, as you can probably see by the background and the fact that Chris is standing next to me. Hello. We're going to be looking at some more of his awesome collection today. For this video, we're specifically going to be looking at a couple different cobra species that he has, which are some of our favorite snakes to work with, and pretty much all around some of my favorite snakes ever. Yeah, so I'll pick out a few of my favorites and have them shown out here in this beautiful day. Let's get started. All right. Of all the cobras we planned on working with today, we thought this one would be one of the easiest and least dangerous. We did not know what was about to happen. This first snake today is a regular monogold cobra. And this snake has been with me since, well, since he hatched. He is now three years old about. And David will take it from here. It's amazing how fast they grow it. It looks yeah, really big. Sure. Especially cobras, even like some of my small cobras that I got last year are now already like getting kind of big. Lower him down a little. Now keep a very close eye on the cobra during this next clip. Chris, are you uh, comfortable talking on camera about getting bitten by one of these? Sure. Because you did, right? I mean, I've, yeah, when I, when people ask me if I've been bit before, the answer is yes, and there are two bites. Most people know about the Malayan Piss Viper. Ooh, dude. People know about the Malayan Piss Viper. Dude, it's just spat me right in the eye. Yep, all right. <laughs> oh my Unlike God. the spitting cobras though, get it hurts, clean. but it doesn't hurt a lot. Get that clean, boy. Yeah, I'm gonna go rinse my eye real quick. Keep the position yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking over here. Due to David's nonchalant reaction, it took a moment before Chris and I realized the severity of the situation and that we needed to go inside and help. Wait, like on your eye? Yeah, directly into the middle of the eye. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Monocle cobras are generally not considered to be spitting cobras. While I was aware that some individuals do have the ability to spit their venom, it's very rare and Chris had never observed this one doing it before. That's why I held it up the way I did, using my face to keep its focus. Had we known that this one does spit, I would have kept it away from my face. Other eye? Other eye? Luckily, the speed and effectiveness of our treatment meant that we could get back to filming in just a couple of minutes. Although, this wasn't the only close encounter of the video. Alright David, can you tell me about what just happened there? Alright, so what you just saw happen was I just got spat in the eye pretty much point blank by a monocled cobra. You can see it looks like I've been crying, it's just my eyes are tearing quite a lot and it still burns, but I did immediately wash it out, so it should be alright. Uh, what I did was I just lied on the floor and Chris poured water in my eyes whilst I was swiveling my eyeballs in circular motions. That's the best way to rinse out uh, cobra venom from your eyes. It's not as painful as the venom of a spitting cobra because monocle cobras aren't actually known to be spitting cobras. They very rarely only spit and when they do, they can only do so for like a foot or two <laughs> and with no accuracy at all. It just happened that you were yeah, it face was a to cone face in the it. face. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you didn't escape unscathed yeah. either, Chris. Somehow, a drop of venom got on me and I have a, well, slight allergic reaction to it. Well, I'd say a reaction to it. 
because every time a spitting cobra venom gets on me if I don't wash it off immediately I feel like a burning sensation which is exactly what that was is that a natural uh, like reaction for you or did it develop yeah. over time for sure it was natural for me I know a lot of keepers will say that when their spitting cobra spits on them they feel the exact same thing I do but then yeah. I have like a handful of other keepers saying they don't feel anything so it's more like a reaction per person yeah okay. you didn't actually get to look at it a lot that last time because it got me right after I started Whoa. and it just spat on my leg again so I'm definitely not gonna be holding it up to my face anymore because this one does spit I mean we did plan on using a uh, eyewear but that's, handling spitting cobras. That's for the cobras which are <laughs> yeah. coming next. That's yeah. a great thing to bring up because most keepers who are new into this think monocled cobras cannot spit at all. So that was a good demonstration to show that they can. I've been spit in the eye by true spitting cobras before a few times and I can definitely say <laughs> this isn't nearly as bad because it's already stopping to be painful. Don't worry, she's aiming for another shot. Yeah, but I don't think she could even reach me from from where she is now. They have a very, very short range when it comes to she's spitting. Like, Want to bet? <laughs> yeah, she's like. I was gonna sure say, let's put that? it, let's put it to the test. <laughs> you can see they have the name Monocle Cobra by that nice monocle pattern on the back of their neck. Anyway, we were saying before the uh, incident happened. But Chris, you got bitten by one of these in the past, right? Yes, I've gotten bit by a supine monocled cobra to the arm, actually, and thankfully it was not too bad of a bite. However, I did receive anti-venom a few hours later, and even that stopped my heart for really? like a few seconds. Did you have any, like, necrosis? I completely blacked out. No, there was, like, no necrosis. You can barely see the fang marks. There's one right there. And how long ago was And this? all I did was like, back then I was keeping squirrels and I had them all over my body but I was like, I washed most of my arms off and my hands but I didn't think something would like go up there. So at night I was like refilling the water bowls and then one of my monocled cobras sniffs a squirrel and he shoots out right here and then he like sniffs my arm and like slowly bites it. I was thinking to myself like not to move quickly. Like something might happen if I like jerk back right away, but no, he took a bite anyway. They're so used to eating frozen thawed meals that he didn't inject any venom. But the venom stuck on his fangs already was enough to get me in the hospital. And how long ago was this? This was, I think, 2015. So like three years ago, almost four now. You're still here today? Yes. This gave me permanent heart damage, but I'm still here today. Really? Jeez. Yeah. Cardio toxicity. All right, so do you want to bring her back there? Sure thing. Is this one the proper in there? After all that excitement, it was straight on to the next beautiful cobra. So this one would appear to be a completely different species to the last one. Why don't you tell us about this snake? What is this? This is another monocled cobra, and. I didn't mean to push her closer to you. <laughs> but she is what I call a leopard morph. And that is a pattern you see back here. It is all in the genetics. She is still very much a monocled cobra. There is a bloodline called a supan, which is from one province in Thailand. And people took that bloodline and paired, that, uh, paired it up with one called exantic. And this is what you get from the two. A very stunning leopard pattern cobra. So this one keeps its focus really well. Not all individuals can focus on you quite as well as others. Some of them will get distracted and kind of go off and try and bite your hand. Whereas this one, you can see, is very focused specifically on my face, which is what allows me to handle him in the way that I am. Because he just sees my face as the threat, not realizing what my hands are doing. Howdy, baby. That looks that looked quite fun. That looks, that looks quite, quite um close to a spit what it just did there. Yeah. I need to go wash my eye again. Okay. Take one guess as to work. Okay, take one guess as to why we're wearing glasses now. David? 
because now we're going to be working with actual spitting cobras, not just non-spitting cobras which spit anyway. <laughs> <laughs> which means double the accuracy. Double the fun. This one is a Philippine spitting cobra. This is the only one in Thailand. Do they normally spit a lot or are they quite reluctant? Mine's just very jumpy. I've never bothered her long enough for her to spit a lot. Let's keep it that way. I don't want to yeah. get spat on too much more today. And she's not as big as the others. And they don't get as big as monocled cobras. But what they lack in size, they make up for it with extra potent venom. These are in the top 10, probably top 5 most venomous cobras out there. Endemic to only northern Philippines. And you said they used to be considered the second most venomous cobra species. Like, there's always more research being done, so now the water cobras take like the first. Seems quite reluctant to herd, which is a... Uh... <laughs> she's like, she's, she's been calm all her life. I've had her since she was like four or five days old. But she's always been quick. Similar to like the Siamese spitting cobras, they don't get that big. These snakes only get to about four or five feet. But she's a nice one. And I'm guessing it's a mainly neurotoxic venom. Oh, for sure. A lot of the spitting cobras actually have yeah, very cytotoxic venom. Quite cytotoxic venom. Again, some of the nun spitters. Double the fun. Now you can't see much from here, but if she spreads that hood out, you see a beautiful spotted light pale marking. That's what makes them special to me, even though I never see it from mine. Usually, if you tickle the hood of cobras a little, they'll like flare up a bit. Yeah. There, 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 see that? there you can see it now. You come Look from the top, you can see a. Uh, very light speckling. Which is very, very nice. I've never seen that before. Of course, these being from the Philippines, and we're in Thailand, I'm guessing there's no anti venom yeah, in the country for these. To fly there. I do like They're traveling. Facing body. But I don't feel like traveling to the Philippines for a bite. You can hurt that right after you get some anti venom. See now what you mean about them being twitchy. Yeah. So I don't get like too hands on on this one. Alright, I'm gonna put it away. And on to the next one. We've got another spitting cobra here, another personal favorite, the Siamese spitting cobra. which might end up spitting at David. Yeah, this species from my experience is always relatively quick to spit. And people say Asian spitters don't spit very well, but these I find are one these of the ones, most accurate. These are one of the more accurate spitting cobras. I guess they're just a bit limited in range compared to some of the African species. And they spit more in like a, still in more of a mist than a jet. Quite happy with its attention being on Chris for the I knew moment. it. It really does look like an Oreo. <laughs> Oreo snake. And this isn't just a morph, is it? This is a, actually yeah, occurs a natural, in the wild. Naturally occurring morph in the wild. Of course, most Normally wild specimens. Most wild much. specimens are like grayish or blackish, but. In what Western Thailand, you do get these. Since they're not an ambush predator, they like track their mice down and eat them, as well as like other snakes, frogs, and lizards. You would suspect that they would, well, be much duller than this. Chris's dad is in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Dad! And David, you worked with this species a lot over your life because you lived in an area where it was relatively common. Yeah, when I was doing snake removal and relocation calls in Hua Hin, this would be by far the most common species of cobra we'd get. Although the ones in that area are almost all completely jet black. Not at all like this one. So David, and you have quite I a lot of experience like of getting a spat in the eye by this one. Yeah, I've been spat a few times by this species. It burns a lot more. It's a very, very painful thing and to get in your eye. 
the cytotoxins at work. Yeah, exactly. Although what is reassuring is that the bite of the species is one of the milder cobras you can get bit by compared to, for example, the monocle cobra or the Philippine cobra we just worked with. These do have the least toxic venom when it comes to being bit, which is still more than enough to potentially kill you. And the cytotoxic components are very nasty. Yeah, I've seen people just survive with like amputated fingers. But of course, if you were bitten, this is one species where anti-venom would be available. Very easy to get. You don't get too many uh, deaths occurring of this species in Thailand due to the venom. It's mostly the monocle cobra. Yeah, and people just get to the hospital as soon as they can, no matter what bites them. Apart from like in the more rural areas where they go to witch doctors and use weird herbs and stuff like that. Yeah, that used to be the reason why the Malayan pit viper was responsible for it the most still deaths. Is. Oh, well, not more. Uh, it's still more the most bites, bites, but now, yeah. like, uh, especially with like the newer generations, and they did a lot of like awareness across the country, yeah, exactly. and people are much more ready to go to hospitals now rather than seek. Um, yeah. It's only really the old. It's only really the old. The generation which See seeks. That? She just took a strike at my hand and I moved my hand out the way and she actually bit her own body. It was crazy because I always feel like spitting cobras would rely more on spitting than biting yeah, as exactly. a defense, but nope. <laughs> now this one will definitely bite if you give it the chance. Even if you stay still, I think. I think if I just like put my shoe there, she might take a chew on it. Let's give it a shot. No, thank you. These shoes are fabric and very thin. 200, 200 baht shoes from the market and trying. Yeah. I bet she smells my scent somewhere on her body. Definitely wouldn't hesitate to bite if I give it the chance. So we're gonna keep it short and put her back. For the last cobra of today, we have this beautiful black Moroccan cobra from Northern Africa. Just look at that sheen. The light just reflecting off. Uh, interesting story about this one on how she got into my collection. And it's actually because she bit her previous owner and killed her. And that's not the snake's fault, but it was the owner's fault for feeding uh, her cobra a rat. And then the cobra just confused her hand for the same rat because she didn't wash her hands. And she fed the rat by hand, yeah, right? Yeah, she, she hand fed the rat to the snake. Not a good idea for feeding venomous like that at all. You have proper tools for that. And yeah, even, well, her friend told me the news and that's how I got them from her friend and she never blames the snake which of course you should never blame this animal a venomous animal capable of taking you down if it's in your care you're responsible for your actions and you can never make grave mistakes like she did and uh, worth noting that both your bite and hers yeah. didn't come on account of the snake even exactly. being defensive it's just a mistake feeding responses Cobras have very strong feeding responses. Almost every cobra does. So if you're planning on keeping these and uh, yeah. not know dying, what you're doing. yeah. As you can see, she's one of like my most curious cobras, and the male's actually in shed sleeping, so he doesn't really care. But she never approaches anything with her hood extended, like never defensive. She's always like flicking her tongue. Oh, what's this new thing? What's that new thing? We are getting a little hood there. Mm. I bet she smells like the other cobras. Yeah, and a lot of cobras do eat other snakes as well, so I'm going to be extra careful not to let its head touch me, because that even could trigger a feeding response. All of the other cobras that we worked yeah, with today... The most calm. These ones are very calm, but what I was going to say was, these ones also feel very different. They're mm. way more slick and glossy, whereas the other ones have sort of like a matte, yeah, exactly. powdery finish. These ones are Longer built. extremely glossy, very smooth, slick snakes. 
it feels like you're touching a beetle to I be mean, honest for, even from like what i can see here i can just see that the texture is completely different mm -hmm. and this is the only uh, non-asian cobra we've worked with today isn't it yeah, yeah the only non-asian cobra i have really sadly. no you have hmm? forest cobra oh yeah f we do it damn it so this is the last snake we're going to be looking at today it was a really fun day we had a little bit of why do I keep saying a little bit of more? That makes no sense. We had a little bit more action than we were hoping for. Of course, me being spat in the eye. It barely hurts now. It's just tearing a bit every now and then, but it's really nothing to worry about as soon as you wash it out quickly and have no major cuts or injuries on your face. So I'm sure I'll be all right. I'm going to hand this back to Chris. Thank you so much for having me over no once again. No problem, dude. Pleasure's all mine. Come back whenever you feel like it. I will. Definitely. And of course, these are all Chris's snakes, so if you want to see more of them... Yeah, check out my channel. David will put it somewhere. There. <laughs> yeah, okay, right there. <laughs> now we're gonna put her back and finish up. Yeah, All right. sounds good. That was fun. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, head on over to Chris's channel too. Link is in the... It's in the description. Link is in the description. Thank you.